So, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Sor and I'm, a, I'm an author and an ambassador for Multicultural Exchange and Dialogue. And this is our first Soul in the City series of creative and explorative workshop meant to feature season by season experts, wordsmiths and savies in the field. And to keep it fresh and fun, we uh, have invited for a small introductory interview, our workshop host and coordinator for the first time. And for the next three seasons, Krista Siglin. Hi, Krista. Hi, Sor. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's great to have you. Now, Krista has an outstanding bio with a degree in creative writing and painting and a lengthy list of collaborations with reviews and journals in the industry. And she published a book last year and she has a beautiful relationship with her cat. Now, what have I missed about yourself, Krista? What can you tell us more about yourself? Um, yeah, as I, I grew up in the Midwest, um, United States, and I moved to Berlin in 2017. And since then, I've just been trying to learn how to be a grown up. And it's, it's a, uh, it's an up and down process. But <laughs> uh, I, I really love it in Berlin. Uh, I've been able to become a part of several communities here. And it's, it's just been like the delight of my life so far to meet people here in Berlin and, and make these connections with people. Great. It's great. Well, um, on, a, on a very short and side note, my first impression of you was of an event that you came, uh, I think it was for the first time. And after the event, there were a lot of discussions, as usually it happens after the event. People drink and they are all involved into social and political um, uh, topics. Uh, and we were somehow in the same group, and um, most of which uh, um, was made of uh, male artists. And <laughs> at some point, you were asked a question, and I was like already ready, you know, to back you up. I, I was thinking, okay, I don't want her to feel unwelcome. She's for the first time here, so I need to be careful, you know, to, to, to keep her safe. But, you know, you, are, you articulated your points so well, and your arguments were so clear that everybody was like, you know, speechless. So nobody needed any more questions or anything. And, and then I thought, okay, I have to collaborate somehow with this girl. We're going to make something nice together. And here, here we are now doing something together, and I think it's going to be just great. <laughs> Thank you, Sor. <laughs> yeah, it meant a lot to like see you there, and like I felt like there was like this metaphysical like I got you moment. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a long time ago, but it's still you know somehow somehow vivid. Now, as we said together uh, to talk about this workshop, and we wanted to make it a bit more interesting and fun and a bit different from the others, uh, I was intrigued by your ideas. And especially because of the intertwining of the many talents that you have, and you put them all together into 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 what you do, and especially one one word, uh, the egg phrases. I hope I said it correctly, uh, which means in Greek description. What is about this word? What what's so important about this word? Um, yeah, it's funny that you uh, sort of focused on that word. Um, at Sand, we just had an event in which um, ekphrasis was like a huge part of it. I, you said ekphrasis and I say ekphrasis and I'm not really sure which one is correct. Okay. Um, I think when I say ekphrasis, it sounds like really uh, Midwestern. Um, when you say ekphrasis, I, I think it's like, it sounds more sophisticated, but this word, yeah, as you said, it, it means description. Um, and, and specifically applied to poetry, it means like a, a vivid description of a scene or a work of art. And um, through uh, sort of transcribing uh, this into a poem, uh, there becomes this point where like the poem takes on both like the energy uh, from the initial artwork, but also like builds and constructs its its own world. And so it's an interesting way to write a poem, you um, sort of springboarding off of a work of art. So it, it's a really interesting way, I think, especially when you're stuck um, in writing a poem to, to engage in this particular method of writing. Amazing. All right, which leads me directly to my next point. Do you really believe in the word news? Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> like, I, do we really have to have a muse, or we can just make up one? Or we just, uh, what's what's what do you think about this? Um, so I, I personally, and I don't want to start any fights with anyone. I don't believe in in a muse. Like, I, I, I think that the closest thing for me. You don't believe in the handsome guy who shows up, and then you, you just <laughs> you're just taken, and you just write five poems. 
on love and, and all of that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I, again, I like, I don't want to like dictate what works for other people. Just speaking from my own experience, like, uh, I'm more of an advocate for like muse as a collective energy, like not as an individual, but like as a resonance that occurs through the act of collaboration. Um, often, as I said, when I get really stuck, I'll, I'll like, um, I'll look to other poets or I'll look to pieces of art or I'll like collaborate with someone because so often what's happening is like I am sort of bored by what my own mind can produce and I'm like I need someone to like come in there and like shake things up and so um often I just do that through reference or like through collaboration. Okay so you mentioned co uh, collective energy and collective inspiration uh, it means, particularly for this workshop, that you are also expecting to, yourself to get something out of it, and you expect the audience to get something out of it. What, what, uh, what are your expectations? What do you expect for yourself to get out of it, and what do you expect for, for them to get out of it? So uh, both of my parents are teachers, and uh, so my mom. Same here. Same here. Yeah, for real. Oh, <laughs> my mother. My mother. <laughs> So like when I talk to my mom about the experience of, of running a workshop, I, I, I tell her like, I get just as much out of it as everyone else. And she was like, that's such a teacher response. And um, yeah, I, I think for myself, um, what is interesting is that like a lot of the themes that I talk about, like I've kind of like circled many times, um, but every time I circle it with like a new group of people, um, I have a different experience of it. And so there's just, there's this like depth and richness that arises from it that like, I couldn't, um, you know, I, I, I couldn't produce by my own willpower, like having different perceptions of it um, sort of collide at different times. It's just like, it changes my understanding each time. Mm -hmm. And so that for me is like really exciting and um, really, really worthwhile. People discover like new methods of, of finding references, building references, um, new methods of constructing a poem, um, a, a new awareness about like how we build associations even before we even make it to the form of the poem. And also like finally, um, I, I hope that people build new friendships and new potential collaborations with each other. Awesome, awesome. Okay, um, in this uh, Netflix and chill <laughs> era, what how do you how do you intend to make it um, somehow appealing you know because people tend to be passive and they tend to just you know chill and do nothing and just watch nothing how do you intend people to engage people to do something and open up their minds and, and be creative themselves and maybe create their own movies and stories um yeah so it's funny that you say the word uh passive because like when i was thinking uh, about this um, and like also recently been monitoring my own Netflix behavior, I, I get kind of like, uh, I get so restless with the amount of passivity. Um, and, and I end up like having Wikipedia open next to uh, my Netflix and I'm like uh, looking for the historical accuracy of things like within like a show. And so then I'm realizing like, oh, like I'm actually like starving intellectually right now like I want to be engaged and I think that this is like a similar thing it's so much easier to like be in this state of passivity especially with Netflix um but like once you sort of show up for yourself once you like show up to the workshop and start engaging with yourself and engaging with other people um it feels so much better it's like it's like putting down the bag of chips the best I can say is that like the fun comes from uh, peeking into how another person constructs a poem and, and interacting with that construction and like uh, having the element of surprise from someone else's consciousness and like being able to actually actively engage with it. So I think the fun is like through the engagement. And interactivity, great. Um, well, to be very honest, I, you had me at hello <laughs> to quote one of my favorite movies at Netflix. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But uh, um, yeah, I mean that's that. If you if you want to add something, that's it for my for my very short concise interview. And um, I'm gonna give you the last word. I just want to thank you very much for uh, for joining us into uh, into this uh, uh, adventure and for musing us up <laughs> into this creative um, journey. So um, 
Yeah, thank you. Yeah, nothing to add here. Just thank you too. I really appreciate you, Sora. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Before we go, do you have any questions? Um, I don't think so. I, I think right. I'm ready to go, except, except for it's just good to see you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, uh, well, um, Bruce. Our oh, Brexit, Bruce. our Brexit expert. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing right now, but it's great. I love it. It's, it's, we have 30 countries, 30 people, you know, everybody uh, publishing something. And it's so diverse. I, I was looking at, I was having fun looking at the distance between like what they were de depicting and what actually happened. Um, so I, I don't know. It was, it wasn't totally a waste of time. I learned more about the bubonic plague. Uh, but <laughs> 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 oh yeah. You don't like I, it? I still haven't seen it. I still haven't seen it. Oh, you have to. It's, it's five dimensional um, perception and it's, it's really, really well done. It's well done. Nice. So that's something that I actually enjoyed lately, but you know, that's one out of ten. Yeah, I think it's a <laughs> preventative measure from that word that is now surfacing, uh, like languishing. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I, I, I feel that I'm at risk for languishing. And so like, I need something. To understand that they can connect with me and, and, and through my voice and through their, their, their energy. Like you said, that's how I connect with them. I need to connect with my own. It helps a little bit. Um, it doesn't totally sort of satiate me in the same yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> What's funny that you said about Netflix, you know, because I do, I tend to do the same thing every single linguistical challenge or historical challenge, you know? So that's, that's definitely, I, li I like it when you said there because I was thinking, oh, okay, I'm not the only one. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> let's start it, let's, let's do it. Sounds good, sorry.